Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about this notion called escape velocity. And what we're really talking about is modeling variable gravitation forces. All right, so what we're talking about here obviously is the law of gravitation. The law of gravitation, there's uh, some little mass right here, and there's some big mass. And then there's a distance, we'll call x, between them. And we're really thinking of these masses as point masses. So we're really looking at the center. So we're taking center to center, what is the distance between them? And that's going to be x. And then, of course, the force uh, between these uh, masses, which we'll call fg, is going to be, uh, uh, it'll be g, the gravitational constant, times m. I'm going to put a capital on that, just times the mass of the big one times the little mass of the little one, all over x squared. So that is the force. And of course, right here, we see it actually depends on distance. So of course, if the distance is small, the gravitational force would be high. And if, it's, if, it's, if the distance is very large, of course, the force would be very, very, very weak. Uh, and it'll go as 1 over the square of the distance. Okay, so of course, uh, near Earth, near Earth, Fg is approximately just equal to 9.8 um, uh, meters per second squared <coughs> um, times uh, the mass, right? And really, this number right here is, is, is all of this stuff, uh, gravitation times the big mass of Earth divided by uh, x, which in this case, x is approximately just going to be what we call the radius of the Earth, which is, uh, I have it written right down here, um, the radius of the Earth is uh, 6.378 uh, uh, um, times 10 to the sixth meters. Okay, so, uh, uh, and fold those numbers together, you get the 9.8 from it. Um, what's most important, though, and that's because if, if near Earth, basically, x does not change much uh, when you know uh, uh, when you're on the surface. Whether you're at the lowest point in Death Valley or if you're at the highest point on top of Mount Everest, uh, the amount that x changes uh, is so small that essentially 9.8 is, is effectively constant. But of course, if you're talking about things like orbit or you know space travel, uh, uh, then x x does. Uh, vary uh, so much that uh, then you'll have to consider this uh, what I call a variable gravitational force that's that's position dependent. So it does vary, and it varies sufficiently enough that we're going to have to consider it. So let's talk about the standard problem of escape velocity. And that problem is we have Earth down here. And we have some sort of rocket. Here's my rocket, okay? And we're gonna fire off the surface of the Earth and we're gonna go up. And let's say we're, we have some starting velocity, which we call V-naught. We'll just pretend, uh, we're gonna simplify our situation, that the rocket will accelerate to V extremely quickly. And then it's gonna launch into Earth. And of course, the whole time, this is our V of T as it goes up, um, it's the, the rocket will fire and then stop firing. So we're going to consider uh, not really a rocket, but actually a rocket-like uh, projectile. Okay, that, that is launched at uh, v naught. Uh, uh, velocity. Okay, what's going to happen, of course, is Fg uh, will uh, will decelerate 
uh, the rocket, the object. Okay, this rocket object. Okay, so we're not going to consider the actual thrust force. We're going to pretend that the thrust force fires really quickly and then turns off, gets the rocket going up to speed very quickly, and then it's just going to be launched into outer space, right? But this deceleration, we want to know, basically there's two outcomes. So the two outcomes are as follows. Uh, one, uh, uh, basically deceleration, Deceleration will uh, force rocket or our projectile back to Earth. And the second, so that's that's one. And two, the other option, the two outcomes, the other outcome will be that uh, uh, the rocket leaves orbit uh, forever. It's able to actually escape from the, the force of gravity and it'll go out forever. Okay, so those are the two outcomes. All right, there is a third outcome, if you will, uh, that's a very specific one where it, we launch it up so much that, uh, uh, that, um, that somehow we can get the, the rocket to stop and to sit in one, split, one place. Uh, uh, far above Earth, and it somehow then uh, essentially uh, there's this perfect, perfect, perfect balance, but we're not going to consider that. Um, uh, uh, it will never actually happen, but it's basically it just slows down so slowly that it, that it essentially is just never going anywhere. Okay, all right, so these are the two outcomes. And so we want to find out essentially, uh, the question then is uh, what v naught uh, determines which outcome happens. Okay, so that's the question. All right, so again, let's write down the differential equation and get going. Okay, again, so uh, let's write down the problem. So what we have here is we have control, our parameter then, our, our, our unknown, is v naught. That's our that's our velocity, our our initial velocity. Okay, and we want to know, you know, does it does it go, or stay, or come back? Okay, and under what, con what conditions on v naught do you get both of those? All right, so what we're going to do is write down the differential equation. Okay, uh, another 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 problem. We're going to neglect air resistance. Okay, we're going to re neglect air resistance, and again, there's going to be no other active forces on it. Only a gravitation. Okay, so this is going to be a simplified problem. So let's write down the differential equation. Of course, it's always going to be F is equal to MA, or um, as you'd write it as M, that's the ma mass of our rocket, uh, times uh, dV dt is equal to, um, uh, again, our, and I'm going to say negative Fg, all right, because we want our force of the rocket going down. And again, here is our Earth. And that's our, our projectile, some sort of rocket, and it's going to get shot up at v naught. We want to know, is it, as it's slowing down, as it's going up, the force of gravity slowing it down, will it eventually come back down to Earth? Or will it sail off into the, to the heavens? Okay, so let's find out. And now, of course, that is going to be negative, capital G, the gravitational constant, times m, the mass of the Earth, times little m, the rocket all over x squared. So we can write this again. I'm going to rewrite this. And now we're actually going to write this as a, a second-order differential equation. 
Oh, I'm going to back up here. We see that the little masses cancel. The actual mass of the rocket doesn't matter. It's only its initial velocity. So what we're going to get is a second order differential equation for the position x. And that'll be the height of the rocket um, in space at every time. Okay, so we have dx dt squared. Okay, that's the second derivative of position is equal to negative g capital M all over x squared. All right, so, uh, so far in this class, we don't have adequate techniques to solve this equation, a second order differential equation. We'll get there eventually. But I, well, I'm gonna show you a trick to do this particular equation. So let's, let's first down write down some parameters. Uh, G is the gravitational constant, and it is uh, 6.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 11th, and that's why they, they've always called it gravitation is a fairly weak force. I'm going to round this up to just 7 times 10 to the negative 11, okay? Uh, and yeah, I, I just want to make the numbers simple. Uh, same thing, the mass of the Earth, you can look this one up on Wikipedia. It's 6 times, uh, uh, well, I should back that up. It is 5.975 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Uh, and that is, uh, I'm going to just round that up to 6 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, all right, uh, and so of course capital M, cop capital G, that's approximately then, um, it's going to be uh, 42 times 10 to the uh, 13th power. Okay, uh, so, but I'll just use MG or GM uh, most of the time, but we'll just keep that number in the back of our head there uh, as, we're, as we proceed along. Okay, again, we don't have a method for solving uh, this differential equation, so we're going to have to try some, uh, we're going to have to do a change of uh, variables. So the change of variables then is going to be, and, and this is a, a bit tricky, but we'll, we'll work it through. Um, what we have here, of course, is V is equal to dx dt. All right, we know that, uh, but we're going to do this really sneaky change of variables where uh, what we have is our dx, our d squared x dt squared. That's actually going to be um, dv dt. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply dv dt by dr, or sorry, dx over dx. All right, we're going to do this little trick, and this is essentially reversing the chain rule, uh, and say that this is actually going to be dv dx dx dt. All right, and essentially the change of variables we're using here is the change of variables that we're that we're doing here is actually saying that v is a function of uh, of of x of t, right? So when I take a derivative, I get this, dv dx dx dt, okay? So what we're doing now is actually thinking about velocity as a function of position now, okay? So that's what we're going to do. All right, so if I go forward here, hold on one sec. I just have to erase that comma. Um, if I go forward here, and I know what this is, that is V, of course. So what we really have here is V times dV dx. Okay, so this change of variables allows us to make some important changes to this differential equation. So remember, this is all equal to that. So anywhere I have one of these, if I ever, wherever I have one of these second derivatives of x with respect to time, I can put v times dv dx in its place. Right, so that's a fairly clever trick. I think uh, most students look at this and they're uh, a little bit taken back by it. Uh, but it's these kind of things, I think they show up enough in mathematics. It do, it's not an easy thing to do. It's something that uh, took a lot of thinking and a lot of, uh, and a lot of struggle to figure these things out at first. And at, you know, at this stage in your understanding, the important thing is to just accept that yes, these things can be done. And, and the more you see them, the more you'll get used to them.
All right, so let's now write down what our differential equation is. I'm going to change pages here. So now we have, what we had before was dx dt, d squared at x dt squared was equal to negative uh, g capital M all over x squared. But we're now going to write it as follows. We're going to write it as v dv dx is equal to negative g m all over x squared. This equation is separable. Okay, so, uh, and we're gonna separate that, but the first thing we have to do is, let's consider initial conditions. So we had before, of course, that x of t equals zero was going to be r, and that's the radius of the Earth, okay? We also had that um, a v of t equals zero was gonna be v naught. That was the unknown escape velocity. Okay, but now we have to do everything in terms of, so now, of course, what we have then is actually V of X at R is going to be equal to V naught. Okay, good enough, all right. That's our new initial condition. It's expressing these two facts here in one piece, okay. Um, all right, so now what we have to do is separate this equation. So uh, this is integral of v dv right here. And then that's equal to, on the other side, negative g m integral of 1 over x squared dx. All right, and then we add the plus c. Okay, good. All right, so we can integrate this. That's going to be v squared over 2 is equal to... Uh, g m 1 over x times 1 over x uh, and you can work that out if that's true plus the capital C. All right and now we're going to uh, include the initial condition. We're going to move this over. We know that now v naught squared equals 2 times g m all over r because that was the initial condition for r for x equals r. Uh, plus uh, C, C, capital C. All right, so we just have to solve for C. So C then is going to be equal to uh, V naught squared minus 2 G M all over, that's a capital M, capital M, capital M. Uh, be, need to be careful there, over R. All right, so now I have our constant there. Uh, we follow through with that and then find that v of x then is going to be equal to the positive root of uh, g m all over x plus v naught squared minus 2 g m all over, oh, we need to put a 2 there. It's 2 g m there as well. Uh, 2gm over capital R. Okay, so that's our solution. Good. Let's actually do some plots of this. Um, and again, we had these two outcomes, right? So the idea here is um, we have this constant here. That's that C constant, whatever it is. Uh, and if I were to look at this, we see that this x is going towards 0. The question then is, of course, uh, what we always worry about with square roots is that only valid, it's only valid if, uh, if uh, argument in the square root is uh, non-negative. Okay. Uh, and so what's really going to stop it from being negative is what the value of c is. Because, of course, as x gets bigger and bigger, this thing is going to go to 0. And we're going to be left with this. And if this is negative, then we're going to have some problems. All right. So, um, so what, we, what we need to look at here is this case. So um, what we have to say is um, uh, vx is valid 
is valid only if uh, v squared 0 minus 2gm over r is greater than or equal to 0. All right, and we can see that um, that implies then that v naught squared has to be greater than or equal to 0 to 2gm over r. All right, in this case, we get the following thing. So I'm going to actually look at the case of just strictly greater. What we're going to get is a decaying type function like that that eventually um, eventually leads to uh, v naught that um, uh, that velocity. Um, oh no, sorry, I apologize. That's not true. What velocity does it go to? This goes. It's going to go to. Um, it's going to go to when this is zero. So this value right there is going to be root uh, v naught squared minus two g m over r. All right, provided it exists, it's a real number. So this has to be positive. Okay, and that is what we call the uh, terminal velocity. Okay, and of course we start up here at v naught. Okay, and then we so we can call that v t down here. All right, and that, of course this makes sense. The idea is you launch your rocket uh, from the Earth at a certain velocity, this escape velocity, and over as it's climbing its way up in the atmosphere, as it's leaving Earth's orbit, uh, as it's going up and up and up and up and up, it's slowing down. It's slowing down because gravity keeps pulling it down, so it's slowing down. But the point is the gravity doesn't quite ever pull it down enough to make it turn around. It does eventually leave Earth's uh, pull and keeps going, and it'll keep going forever away from the Earth at the velocity vt. Okay. All right. So again, two scenarios. So the first scenario was that v0 uh, squared, or v is going to be greater than square root of 2g over m over r, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, what is this value? It's probably worth, uh, so that's the first scenario. And that's the scenario where here's Earth. And there's the center. And there's your r. And you start there and you launch and you keep going. And you keep going up, all right? And the second scenario is that uh, v naught is less than uh, square root of 2g m over r, okay, where that capital M is the mass of the Earth, okay, and that's the scenario where uh, you launch up, but eventually you start going back down, okay. So we haven't actually modeled the part where it falls back down to Earth. All we're modeling is up to this point. And that's because um, and this point right there is the turnaround point. And that occurs uh, uh, when uh, v of x is equal to the square root of, again, we had that v uh, uh, squared, not squared. Uh, um, Oh, sorry, we need to be uh, more careful there, uh, 2gm all over x uh, um, m uh, plus v naught squared minus 2gm over r. It occurs when that is equal to 0. So it, it occurs at this specific height, which we'll call xt for turnaround. Okay, so we put that in there xt, right? And it's when this thing, of course, equals zero as well. Okay, so uh, those are the two scenarios. So let's just get a rough figure for what this escape velocity is. Uh, so I said that, um, that that capital G over M, or G times M, 
uh, was approximately equal to uh, 42 times 10 to the 13, okay? All right, and we also said that R uh, was the radius of the Earth was about 6 times, and this is approximate, 6 times 10 to the 6th. All right, so let's put that together. So, of course, uh, 42 times 10 to the 13th all over 6 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, uh, um, so that's going to be about uh, 7 times 10 to the, well, 13 minus 6, so that's going to be times 10 to the 7th. All right, and now we need to take its square root. So that's going to be 7, uh, root 7, times uh, uh, root, oh, I should just do this, uh, 10 to the 7 halves. So whatever that number is, um, uh, if you punch it into your calculator, you can find a pretty good result for it. So uh, 7 halves, that's going to be... Um, Oh, you know, it's going to be somewhere in the thousands of kilometers per second, so it's going to be very fast. Uh, uh, several thousand kilometers per second, or sorry, meters per second, I should say. It should be several uh, 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 several thousand meters per second. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, it's pretty fast. Okay, that's faster than I think um, you could capably do in Earth's atmosphere with a real projectile. So... Uh, of course, real rockets, they fire their rockets for an extended period of time as it leaves the atmosphere and slowly speed up before they actually leave uh, to get out of Earth's orbit. So anyway, thank you very much.